I've got some bloggers on my boat. I woke up this morning and here they were. There was Kerry, there was Laura, there was Matt, and they're all still here, and they're gonna ask me some questions, and just in case you don't know, it's me. And at the same time, they're gonna paint some miniatures, which hopefully you guys will get to see by the end of this. Might as well kick off. Anybody wanna ask something? Um, Andy, can you tell us like a summary of Geekhood Mission Improbable and what happens? Sorry, what? Oh, you're asking not about this book? No, the second book. The sequel? Yes. Yes, I can tell you all about Geekhood, Mission Improbable, by me. It picks up two weeks later, um, where Archie is getting used to his dad living in York. Um, he's getting used to not being Sarah's boyfriend. Tony's back, uh, his mate Begsy is back, and Begsy is organising a group to go to a LARP, which is basically like playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, but you're dressed up and you play it for real. Mum's back, Tony's back, uh, Ravi's back. Uh, Matt's back. There is a new character, a girl, she appears on a train. But yeah, it's all in this book. You're an actor, so what made you decide to become an author as well? There is the deal that when you're an actor, you're a storyteller, you're telling stories. Sometimes you end up telling stories that you don't quite believe in. So I decided as an experiment, as a personal challenge, to try and write something that I did believe in. So is, would you say Geekhood semi-autobiographical? Uh, yes, I'd say it's a thinly disguised, <laughs> thinly disguised account of my haphazard attempts to um, woo girls in my teens, um, which I was hopeless at and still am. So Andy, can you describe Geekhood in five words? Um, books about role-playing geeks. Some geeks get it wrong, uh, that's five words. Uh, two books that I wrote, it's about lots of geeks. It's about lots of geeks. It's a book about lots of geeks. You had a number of hobbies, and sort of have a number of hobbies that are non-mainstream, which would have attracted unwelcome attention from bullies when you were a kid. How did you handle, were you bullied? Would you be able to give advice to kids today that might be experiencing the same things? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh, bullied, you know, for being a geek. I coped with it by sort of doing a lapsing into a vaudeville routine as soon as, you know, uh, a fist came anywhere near me. It was you know, like a full distraction. And if I had any advice, it would be to talk about it. You can tell them if you want not to act upon the information you give them, but it's, I think it's important to just say it out loud to, to somebody you trust. What's a typical writing day for you? Getting up out of bed and doing your day job, and then in the evening, opening up the laptop for me around about seven o'clock, and just writing, and writing until you run out of steam. I kind of wish that I did have a typical writing day, but you know, I have to fit in the rest of my life around writing at the moment. But that'll all change, that'll all change. And then it'll just be a typical writing day, I'll be hurling myself out of bed onto piles of paper and just scrawling on them for hours on end. Something like that. You've done a lot of school events and book signings and things like that. What's been your best or most memorable experience of that? Part of what I talk about is divorce in, in the events. And there was a lad, he was about 14 years old, he was hanging around, he waited for everybody to go. And there was a, a, me and a teacher, and the teacher went to the other end of the room. And he came over and he um, opened his bag, and there were three poems about how his parents' divorce had affected him and how he perceived it. We sort of sat and chatted probably for about 20 minutes about surviving divorce. That, that's probably the one that sticks in my head the most. I did feel very humbled to, for, for somebody to share a difficult part of their life with me so openly. Geekhood was shortlisted for the Waterstones Book Award. I know. Um, what is that like and how did, what happened on the day? Uh, what happened on the day, well what it was like was fantastic. It was um, you know amazing, bewildering and confusing to find that my uh, shiny little yellow book was rubbing shoulders with the, the, the great and the good. That was fabulous. Do you know we, we got to the bit where they were doing the and the winner is. I was literally clutching onto my agent and, and um, Jane the publisher and when they said it was Annabelle Pitcher sure. I just felt relieved. I just felt relieved that the tension was over. I didn't anticipate winning, so I was just happy to have been there. It was, it was a, a brilliant experience. You've had quite a lot of support from the book blogging community. How have you found that experience in the community as a whole? The blogging community are incredible. I don't know why they do what they do, but I'm really glad they do. They are this um, altruistic army who just offer support. They're brilliant. Do you have any tips for aspiring writers? Write. Start writing. I know it sounds silly, but you want to write? Write. Um, read. Read around the genres you're interested in. Find something you're passionate about. Find, find out what your point of view is. Okay.
Okay, mate, get ready. New book, new chapter. Here we go. My EM doesn't know what to do, so it just pulls the plug. Fearing a possible jailbreak and with no other options. Now look, it's a good bit, all right? Pay attention. 